Hey everybody, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello everybody. So today we want to talk to you about surviving COVID and riots. We've had a crazy time going on here in the country and in our business and our community. And it's been insane. So I thought we'd tell you a little about our experience, what we've gone through, what we're going through, and then kind of let you know how we're handling it and maybe give you some ideas and tips on how you can handle it for yourself. Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, COVID was bad enough and then you had the riots on top of it and all this like, you know, unrest with people and it just... Yeah. One one world calamity after another. And so it's really been uncharted waters for everybody in the world. But as business owners and real estate investors, it's been crazy. Now, we also know that on the other side of this is going to be really some tremendous opportunity that's going to show up. But you've got to survive the short-term pain to get to the opportunity. Yeah, and that's most people don't think about that. This podcast isn't about you know whether the riots are warranted or not. We're not like going to go into those topics. We're just strictly going to come at this from a business perspective and you know how to survive through it and how to move forward. So let me tell you first, kind of what started. So you know when this all happened. We were, business was going along great. We actually had um, our real estate investment company was doing well. We were getting some, we we're doing a lot of structural work in our business. So we were, we were um, redoing a lot of our internal systems and we were rebuilding a lot of things at Signature Home Buyers. And then um, at Vester Pro, our coaching arm, we were ready for a, a home flipping workshop. March 27th through 29th, I think it was, whatever yeah. those weekends were. We were ready to, ready to go. And we had been marketing. We had spent um, about $80,000 out of a $100,000 budget on marketing, on infomercials and TV ads and radio, radio ads and digital, uh, digital yeah. online, social media to, to sell tickets for the event. And then they pulled the plug. And said, no large gatherings. So obviously that's not good for us as business owners. And then our other business, everyone had to start working from home. Our it, it makes it like impossible to even plan because you don't know when things are going right. to open back up. And, you know, we're, we do live events. So, you know, that business was just shot. Our business were shut down. So our revenue was severely choked at that point. And we had to start to figure out how to punt, right? That was really the hardest part. Showings for houses went down. The Our people couldn't work in the office anymore. So the phones were ringing. People wanted to sell their house, but yet it was difficult to get to the house. And we've had to try and figure out this out. Now, this is not a complain and bitch and piss and moan session. I'm just kind of giving you a, the picture of what we were going through when COVID punched us square in the nose. Out business. of nowhere. Right, out of nowhere. And then we just started to get back on our feet. So we just started to figure out, hey, we can do this from home. We can have a virtual team at our home buying company. We were buying homes virtually. Yeah, we were buying homes. We had to figure that out. Right. And then as we started to figure all that out, then all the riots happened. So we were just getting on our feet and we had just decided to do a virtual home flipping workshop for our Vestra Pro company. So we were all planned. We were pivoting and we were like, okay, we're going to pivot hard. We're going to do this. And we were excited about the fact we're going to pivot. And we put a date in place and the date was ready to go and the riots came and we said, okay, another world calamity. We have to move the date again. And we got screwed out of that. So all of a sudden we had to move it another month. And the, the reason that happens is, yes, we could have still had our event, but <clears throat> from a business perspective, and that's what we're really focused on in this podcast, from a business perspective, you know, we have to do a lot of online marketing to get people to show up to a virtual event. Now, if you're doing online marketing and you're spending all that money in the messages and the ads and everything, but your your ads are getting lost because of, you know, all of the, the you're, you're, you're just lost in people's feeds and it's not a focus at all. So we could put out all that money for marketing and then never see a return because our message is just completely lost. Right. So... We wanted to make a good business decision for that. So I think we wanted to give you some some tips today and just from our heart on what we have done to survive. So and, let's, and that that even with people with the a very strong mindset causes a lot of anxiety. So you gotta figure out how to work through that. I think this yeah, that's a great point. Is that everybody, even though there's people that are very strong out there that say I can make it through anything, this will test you. Right, and this this tests the strongest of people that have a strong mental uh, outlook and a strong mental uh, framework, if you will. So, that's number one, right? Mindset. Mindset. This is called the Real Estate of Mind Show, and as you know, we believe in helping average people 
build wealth through real estate investing. And that's what we do. And now is going to be a great time for that. It is. The, the upcoming months. You got to get through this yep. pain period, though. This this next few months and weeks are still going to be some pain because I believe that the, the heartache and the financial fallout is still ahead of us. It's not here yet, but it is definitely ahead of us. I think we have to make sure that we are um, preparing for that because when unemployment runs out, when people start going back to work, when actual businesses start to shut down because they don't have any more stimulus checks and they're trying to figure this all out. This or because gonna... restaurants can only get, you know seat 50% capacity right. for how long that's going to go on. They can't survive like that. Right. That's, that's, it's going to catch up with impossible. everybody. The, the thing I think I want to say most about mindset right now that's really been like resonating with me and like I keep even telling myself this is, and we've said this in other podcasts, you focus on the solution, not the problem. And in the media today, it's all about the problem. And I'm not minimizing that there are problems. Get that pen out. You're going you, you. You to hit me with a pen. You keep blowing um, my face with it. Get. I'm not minimizing that there's problems. Yes, there's problems. Yes, they need to be addressed. Yes, some changes need to be made. But if, we're all, if you're just focused on the problem, solutions don't come out of that. So we really need to focus on the solution, whether that be in your business and your family life. In, in today's conversation, we're talking about solutions for businesses so and you've also got to fo- decide what you want to focus on because if you focus on social media i don't care oh. what side you're on the what side of the political side you're on you're going to find it it's you'll so find, draining right you'll now you'll find right? support and you'll find opposition no matter which side that you're on and there's a lot of hate a lot of negativity a lot of name calling and a lot of people angry a lot of friendships breaking up yeah. because of politics oh my god get a freaking yeah. grip this is ridiculous that you get angry because someone that you is in your Facebook feed doesn't agree with your point of view. Whatever. I mean, God, get over it already. You know, grow up. Yeah, I saw I saw um, a pretty famous person. I She did a uh, Facebook Live the other day, and it was like, I can't believe all of you people saying, you know, unfollow, 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 just because I'm on the Black Lives Matter movement. She said, that doesn't make me against cops. Just because you're for one thing doesn't make you against others. And, you know, and it turned out her husband used to be a cop. So these people, you know, people are getting so wrapped up and so just so charged. So the point, and- yeah, the point is you don't want to be focused on that. If you want to be focused on that stuff, fine. You can be focused on it. But I'll tell you what, it will suck the life out of you. And you won't be able to focus on much else because it is consuming. So, it is. So the first thing I want to talk to you again is mindset. But you have to be the guard of your mind. You have to be the guard of your mind. Because if you're not the guard of your mind, somebody else will take over. And if that's what you want, then watch social media. And every day is a crapshoot. When you wake up in the morning, it's like spinning a roulette wheel to see what news hits first. Because if it's a bad story that really gets inside and just grinds away at you, your whole day is shot. Right? Your whole day is going to be because you decided to do that. So make sure that you monitor your thoughts. Monitor what you're putting in. Monitor what you're focusing on. Monitor the energy that you're taking in because that is going to make or break your entire day. And our lives are made up of days and they're made up of minutes, right? Days are made up of hours and hours made up of minutes and so on. So every minute of the day, we have to be aware, what am I looking at? What am I spending my time with? What am I focusing on? And choose the energy, like make a conscious choice of the energy you want to be putting out there. Our seven-year-old daughter, we've been working with her on this for a long time, but even the other day, um, she woke up and said, I'm going to make it a good day today. I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to, you know, not be a good she, listener. She did have a good day. She I did. Think. She had a fantastic day all day long, even yeah. when she had challenges along the way because she made the choice. And so she often throws that back in my face. You know, I'll say I have to do this <laughs> or that. She goes, you know, mom, it is a choice. And um, I encourage that kind of feedback from her because I, it is. I, the way we respond to things, the way we go through our day, the way we treat other human beings, those are all choices. So don't don't let your thoughts control you. You control them. This is the time that mindset is put to the test. And if you think you're good at mindset, now is the time. One thing you can do for your mindset that Amber and I do is we make sure that we're exercising every day. And that's, a, a, that's becoming important. Now, the first couple of months, it wasn't that way for me. I was kind of doing some walks and some stuff. And finally, I said, I'm going to get a little more serious about it and get some of these endorphins flowing or out or producing or whatever endorphins do. But I wanted to make sure I had that working. So I had to go start working out again. And that has helped me tremendously to stay focused throughout the day because even I want to get sucked back into that negative world. All of us by nature just want to see 
the, you know, we all stop for the car wreck, right? We all, they call that rubbernecking, right? When you've got your neck going because everybody's slowing down in the, in the, on the highway with an accident. We're all looking for that. So it's important to, to guard our mind. I want to end this segment by saying I want to guard our minds and guard our bodies and make sure we do everything in our power to keep positive information coming in because what you take in is what you're going to feel is what you're going to put out, right? I agree. All right. Number two. Number two is that you need to be innovative during this kind of time because we do have restrictions. And I think even a lot of the states that are opened more back up than we are, there's still restrictions, whether it's, you know, 50% capacity at restaurants or wearing masks or whatever. So your business might be affected, probably is. So you need to be very innovative. Like Lynn was saying, we, you know, we change to the virtual model of, of being able to buy houses. I don't think we were even a weekend to COVID and we decided to film a new commercial. We shot several, yeah, we shot, shot a new commercial within within five days of being shut down. Yeah. So we went so, we went from in, we went from fearful to innovative just like that. Like we jumped right into the innovative. We part. wanted to get our message out there. You know, look, we've been buying houses for 13 years and we still are. We're just, you know, had to change our model. We're, we are able to do it virtually now. And yeah. guess what? Our phone kept ringing. As a business owner, you're going to have to pivot, right? You're going to, you, you, if you haven't already pivoted, you're going to have to pivot. Even if you're in a business right now that is not affected by this or you're doing really well, that's great. You may have to pivot too because if you're enjoying these high times right now, it'll go back to normal soon. So there's always a pivot moment in a business. And so it's important that you are constantly innovative. One of our values at Vestor Pro is, is innovation. Right. And so that's one of the values. We always want to be innovating. And so this was a forced innovation because it was either innovate or die. That's really what it was. You had to adapt or die and innovate or die. And businesses right now need to innovate however they can. And it might be things that you don't even think of. It might be a different business model. Matter of fact, it, it might be that altogether. It might be, you know, for restaurants, you know, all of a sudden restaurants that never delivered started to deliver and started to use DoorDash and uh, Grubhub, Grubhub yeah. and all those things. So they, they had to figure out a new way of doing business. And I don't know other examples, but you know when you're cutting hair, if you're when that gets open back up, wherever you are, it's starting to open. At, as we're recording this, it's starting to open up now. But um, you know you're going to have to figure out a different way to do it so it makes everybody happy and complies with the government. Don't get me going on that. So all this, all these things, but you're going to have to find a way to make your <clears> business <throat> work. And if you're a real estate investor, you really need to um, be depending on where you are. So depending on where you are in the process or the stage of your investment life, if you're a brand new investor, now is the time to really get yourself educated and prepared. We really believe in being prepared. I do believe that in the few months ahead of us, we've not seen the fallout yet, like I said, and we're going to see the fallout in a few months ahead of us. When that happens, there will be some, there'll be deals on houses and real estate all over the country. And it's your job to get ready for that. Now, if you're already an investor who's investing, I'd start buying now you know, or keep buying houses. I would not be sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. I'd be out there and negotiating and finding the best deals, whether you flip, whether you rent, whether you do short-term rentals, long-term, whatever it is that you do, I would spend your time now out there getting prepared and saying, how can I innovate? How can I be different? Brainstorm, right? You want to make sure you brainstorm with those people around you. Amber and I are part of a mastermind and but Amber and I have the luxury of brainstorming with each other all the time. And she has a, I have a massive head, but she has a massive brain, right? So she's, <laughs> she's, she's beautiful. So beautiful and smart. She has the whole package. And um, I don't really know what part of the package I have, not much. But anyway, so, but I, you know. We shouldn't go there. I'm, yeah, maybe not. So I'm, I'm able to have conversations with her. And, and he never turns off. Like, I mean, midnight, he's, blah, 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 you know, I didn't like. Anywho, I do turn off in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I'm an, I'm an evening person. My, my wheels get spinning. It depends. So that's true. It depends how excited I am about something. So the point is, though, you have to be able to have someone to brainstorm with. So get a mentor, right? If you don't have a mentor, get a mentor. Get with a coach. Um, get with people that are in your industry so they can make you think differently. Because, you know, even being in our mastermind, you hear one thing and you go, oh, what? You do? Wait, How? And all of a sudden, your brain will click in a different direction you never knew possible. It's a golden nugget that, like, you know, led you on this whole different path that changed the way your business goes, your yeah. life, whatever. Yeah. And if you think you know everything, you're going to fail because you have to go in with a humble mindset to say, I, I don't know what I don't know. Even though you think you know a lot, you don't know what you don't know. And so being innovative, brainstorming, pivoting, 
I, and I think too, I'm going to get a little plug in here for my favorite band, Pearl Jam. Um, but they, like they need they, help right now. They have a they have a line in one of their songs that the only thing that doesn't change change is change itself. Whether it's COVID or whether it's riots or whether it's technology, you know, the world evolves. It changes. It moves. You know, things evolve. And so you have to constantly, whether it's during a, a time like this or just even a normal time, if you really want to grow and move your business forward, this is something you need to be doing all the time. All the time. These are great. These are great tips for you to get through any different, you know, right. again, now is when you're tested the most. And businesses get stagnant and, you know, that, or you get so busy working in the business as, as a, a operator that you forget to work on it. So yeah. that's important. So um, number three. Number three is, you know, after you start innovating and coming up with these ideas, you actually have to move forward in a positive direction. So you need to take action. Imagine that. You have to do that. People, a lot of people have great ideas and never take action. You have to execute. You have to execute on your thoughts. That is the, the they're all important. Mindset, innovation, and taking action. So those are the three things we're talking about today. And so the action piece, yeah, you could have the greatest idea in the world. If you don't tell anybody, who cares? Nobody will ever know. You have to make sure that you're out there and telling, you know, start, implement, it. implement your plan. Now, you might say, but how? And the answer is, I don't know. It's whatever it is for you. You've got to figure that out for you. That's what entrepreneurs, that's what business owners do. They figure out solutions to problems. And once they figure it out, they start taking action. And most of the time, you're taking action based on faith. You don't necessarily know the outcome. Now, in our world, real estate investing, nothing's really new. It's been around for you know hundreds of years, so it's not like it's a new thing. So we we want to find somebody that we can emulate and learn from and then do what they do. You know, they always say that success leaves clues. And um, and then find somebody that has what you want and do what they do to get what they got. Right. And so that's what you want to do. You know, this computer is going to drive me nuts. It's I been know. dinging, dinging, so I apologize. <laughs> apparently I got on some He's thread. A and today. Apparently it's just everybody's popping ideas. I see some business owners like firing ideas. So kind of I I can't turn the dinging off now because I'm uh, I'm mid uh, webinar so I'm not going to do that but uh, so, but some of the things that we've done to take action toward our future is you know we're getting we know what's about to come down the down the pike here in the next few months so you know we're getting even more investors lined up we're getting our project manager you know fired up and ready to go and and starting on our houses on day one. And, you know, we're really systemizing our business even more so than it already was yeah. so that we can take massive action during this time. Yeah. And we we have also been really spending time on our infrastructure, really just, you know, um, making sure that we, um, when we grow, which I know we will through this, we're changing our model right now. We're changing a lot of our processes. We're changing how we do things. We have a new CRM. And that's a lot of work to do, but we're doing it so we can be an efficient machine and service as many people as we can and get great reviews out of it. We don't want to just make money and, and, we, and you know, stomp no, on people. We, we actually want to help people. We want to, we want to help people. We want to have a company that has great reviews, but we have to take the time to um, build those systems and those processes in place. So as we bring no, new employees on, they know our vision. There's a lot of stuff happens, but we're taking action every day. We get up, we go to work. We've, we've gone to office every day since yep. it started. So you want to say something? I do. So when you're talking about that, though, in the past, we've had periods of time where we've gone through this, you know, growth phase and we had growing pains. Yeah. And that hurt us a lot. And so set we, us back. it set us back a lot. So, yeah. the, you know, we, we teach our students so that they don't have to have those same growing pains. And we know because we've been there. But even now, you know, this is definitely we're getting set up for a major growth phase again. And we've learned from our past mistakes not to have those same kind of growing pains. And that's why we're really yeah. getting stuff systemized. Now, there's a big difference, though. You don't want it's not like it's it's still ready, fire, aim. Right. My life is still ready, fire, aim. Always. I'm just getting better at ready aim fire, but it's still fire and aim are pretty close to each other. So sometimes it feels like you're flying the plane while you're building it. And that's the way our lives have felt for a long time. Although right now, as we are rethinking and redoing our companies, really, again, innovating every company to say, how can we do this? How can we provide service to our clients? How can we provide service to our students? How can we provide service to our home sellers and our home buyers? We are always innovating and looking for that next Thing to make us better. It's never and always how helps. many of you caught on to that? He said, how can we, how can we, how can we like multiple times there in a row? And that's another thing that we teach in our, our home flipping workshops is 
you know, a lot of times we kind of get stuck in our head and overthinking things and whatever, or not knowing what to do. And we really um, preach the how can I mentality, because yeah. if you sometimes it's just about asking the right question. And if you figure out the how, you know, all the other little pieces will fall in line. So bottom line is, though, that you need to take these small steps every day to keep going forward. Every day. Every day is going to be a small step. This the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And it's true, but you have to take the first one, then the next one, and don't think about the end goal. Hey, I'm transforming my business. I have this big idea, this innovation. You want to break it down and say, what is something I can do today? What is something I can do today? And it might just be you make a phone call, or you schedule a phone call, or you send one email. Just take that step, and that one step can lead you down a different path. But if you never take that first step, you'll never even head down that path. So you have to do that and you have to keep your mindset around when Amber said the how can I, if, you, if you're watching this on video, um, I wear this blue bracelet all the time that we pass these out at our workshops and it's got our values on it, but it also says how can I. And that reminds me to always ask that question in any tough situation is how can I get out of this? And if you teach your kids that like we do, they will use it against you when you forget. They will. They'll remind you and say, Dad, we don't say I can't. We say, how can I? And our like, kids tell on each other for saying I can't. And they're yeah. like, he said I can't. Yeah. You're supposed to say how can I? So it's all good. So so guys, I, I, I hope that that helped you here today. Let's just recap real quick. We, we talked about how, you know, surviving COVID and surviving the riots and the, the insanity that's going around in our world right now. As a business owner, as a human being, you have to survive. And you can use these tips for anything. But Yep. So the first one, and that's the one we're always going to say is first, is your mindset. Because if yeah. your mind isn't right, then nothing else is going to be. That's true in life. <laughs> if your mind's not right, then you're not right. <laughs> you're so not. so my, mindset is so important. And it's something that um, not a lot of people think that they need to give attention to, though. And we think it's critical. And I'll tell you that you won't find anybody in the world who's massively successful or even mildly or moderately successful that doesn't work on their mindset. Some people have a, everyone has a barometer that they're sort of set with. Some people are sort you know, we all know people that are sort of um, leaning negative, right? And they're sort of, everything's kind of like, rah, rah, everything's kind of negative. And then there's people that are like, oh, they're just kind of average. And there's some people that are so positive, you want to punch them in the face all the time. Cause you're like, oh my God, how can you be so positive? But everybody's barometer is different. Like how they're wired is different. How they were raised, how their parents right. were, yeah. So if you're not always positive by just naturally speaking, if you're mild or moderately, or you're just sort of leaning towards negative, you're going to have to work at it. That's going to be something you're going to have to work at. But don't mistake this. If you are not working on that, you will never achieve your full potential ever. And don't say that's just how I am because that's that's BS. Yeah, so, that's bullshit. Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can swear yeah. in here, I think. So just you know, you, you so. can't just you can't just say, well, that's how I am. That's how I was raised. You can change because yeah. thinking that way and being that way is also a choice. We're big, big proponents of that because you've got to get your mindset around this. You will not be your full self. You will not be as good as successful as you can be until you have your mindset right. That's why we call it the Real Estate of Mind Show. So number one is mindset. Then number two is going to be innovation and all, yep. you know thinking outside of the box and creating and changing. Right. Evolving. Now, that's all going to be really important. We've talked about that in great detail. You've got to be innovating and saying, you know, what can I do different? How can I think outside the box? How can I be different? How can I adapt or die? In business, you're going to adapt, you're going to die. That's always true, but now it's really true, right? Even if you're somebody whose business has been, you know, rioted down and burned down or you've lost it, it sucks. I, it really sucks. And I feel for you as a business owner, I really do. But that doesn't mean it's over. It just means another phase is about to open. So get this right and then figure it get out. Get your mindset right and figure it out. And number three is taking action. Yep. So like we talked about that in great detail. You've got to take action. The last, the last point that we talked about, so we won't belabor it anymore, but... Nothing happens until you take action. And, you know, I the very first real estate course I ever bought when I was 18 years old, which feels like forever ago. It was forever ago. Shut up. <laughs> You're, it, was, it said, I always remember the big flyer that came out of the box and it said, action equals results. But massive, massive action, action equals, equals massive, massive results. results. And so I keep that in mind every time I take action towards something because the bigger and bolder action you take, the more successful you can be. You're going to increase your odds dramatically. So hope that helped you guys today. Hope you learned something about us and kind of how we're dealing with the COVID and the riots and all the craziness going on. And I hope that you can find some inspiration for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, if you've got questions or thoughts, we would love to hear them. So leave a message about, you know, what you've done to pivot in your business. What what action steps are you taking? How has this affected you? We, you know, if you've got a question about 
brainstorming you know put that down there and we'll be happy to please do and what's our new we have a new website we're oh, launching we, we haven't even launched it well what, what is it and amber.com what's glenn and amber.com two ends on glenn i think one works too but two ends is the right way to spell so glenn and amber.com will lead you to us so all right guys thanks for being here today with the real estate of mind show and we'll see you again next week all right see you then Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Schwarm. We'll see you next week.